is 300 of our favorite certified meeting professionals. We're in Birmingham, Alabama to celebrate our profession and to have a little bit of a refresh. We're going to contribute back to our own community. We're also going to be inspired and elevated by our amazing keynotes and all of our breakouts. These are the, the best of the best. They understand the meetings industry. They've seen all types of speakers. And so my desire is to impress them and entertain them and, and remind them of the importance of what they do. So uh, my opening presentation is called Conversations That Matter. I consider this a diversity training disguised as a communication program. So today is the day, now I'm getting ready to present to a room full of event professionals in just a moment. Here you see how they set up the room for my presentation and I'm super excited. Uh, in just a moment, doors will open and we're going to have some fun and play with them. Well, what's fascinating about First Impressions is most people's typical approach is some kind of shallow interpretation. And what I like about your work, Sylvie, is that it, First Impressions are about being your most authentic, true, whole self. And that if we can create spaces where your most authentic, true, whole self are present, then that makes it present and available for other people. Event professionals are always making a first impression. That is what their role is. They're inspiring people that come to their events and they only have one chance to do that. What is that one word that should pop up in everybody's mind when they think of you? What is that one word your first impression should say about you immediately, no matter if it's your spouse, your neighbor, your client, your manager, your team members, whoever it is. What do you want people to think of you when they think of you? Wouldn't it be amazing if I would have a magic machine that I could put on everybody's head now and we could read others' mind if that's actually what they think of you when they think of you? The good news is I have that magic machine. For Tom. Tom, I would need your help in demonstrating something to the group that in just a moment everybody's going to do. But so Tom, here is a white sheet of ladles. Because the first thing they did is they looked at you, your A for your appearance. And that includes your body image, the suit you are born in. Are you tall? Are you short? Did you take care of it or not? Does it look healthy or not? And hopefully you cover that body with clothes. And then they look at your clothes, the quality, the fit, the cut, the colors, the style, everything that they see including your hair, your makeup, your accessories, the entire visual image that you create. But to be very clear, looking good is not enough. Because then they look at your behavior, how you behave, your attitude, positive or negative. And there is only one person who can decide if it's positive or negative, and that is you. And we see that from the very beginning, we feel it. Your body language, how do you carry your body through the day? How do you sit, how you stand, to how you walk? Your business etiquette skills. Did you shake somebody's hands? Did you look into their eyes? Were you on your phone instead? Did you let people walk out the elevator first or last? Did you sit down first or last? Those tiny moments that can impact how confirmation bias afterwards works either for you or against you. And at one point, you're going to open your mouth. 
the C for communication. And it's about what you say and how you say it. Your voice is a very powerful tool. It's like an instrument that you play every single day. And most of us do not learn how to play that instrument. And what you say. We know that people will remember you for the first 11 words in every conversation. The first 11 words that come out of your mouth are the most important ones. So most people waste it with, how are you doing? Half of it, gone. Nobody's going to remember you for how are you doing. There is nothing wrong with asking how are you doing, if you are really interested in it. But how about you start with something you know about the person you're going to meet? How about you prepare? How about you research? How about you go on their LinkedIn profile and find something out about your client, your client's company, the people that you both know, something positive that shows them from the very beginning that you care and came prepared. That ABC model, by the way, is nothing I came up with. It's very common. You will find it anywhere when it comes to image or perception or how, the pe how people think about you. However, I have added the D. And that might explain the 3,000 contact points you have every single day. Because I find that nowadays, most often, we don't make a first impression anymore in person. We make it in a digital way. You send out emails every single day and you don't even know where they're going to end up. Maybe an email you sent weeks ago got forwarded, 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 and right now somebody is making a judgment about you and you don't even know about it. Maybe right now somebody Googles your name and what do they find about you on the internet, on social media? And do not tell me that Facebook is private. Because if there are two things that don't belong together, it's the internet and private. There is no fit. So right now, somebody could Google your name and actually make a decision if they want to hire you or not, reach out to you or not. That you look, appear, behave like somebody who cares or not. Wow, Sylvia, all I can say is you rock the stage. People loved it. I have not seen that much engagement ever in a lunch session. Yeah, well received, people still talking about it.